Hi guys, this is Frenchy and uh, I'm doing this video to complement the video that I've just done about shot matching because uh, I've been contacted to review a plugin that is called Color Clone made by the company Filmatic AI and um, I was testing it just now and I really want to show you actually the results that I had because I'm quite impressed with uh, the outcome. Color Clone is a plugin uh, to match your camera to other cameras. It's useful because uh, it works kind of like a color space transform but have a bit more color science under the hood because uh, also it's uh, split to different cameras and they are different uh, way of catching light and interpreting the colors so within the same brand for example and this plugin uh, introduced more choices of cameras and their own color science to our shot matching which is very interesting actually so first i'm going to show you how the plugin works so uh, we're going to test it on the test footage that filmatic ai sent me and i really appreciate their help because i don't have this kind of footage that are shot by each camera and uh, in the same lighting condition in the same moment then it's very easy for us to see what it does but at the same time to test it a bit uh, we're gonna compare it to footages that have been shot for commercial so these ones are real life shoot uh, where i needed to match an ARRI Alexa LF with an Alexa 35 and an A7S 3 and also we're gonna compare with a color space transform what it does and what are the differences between these two methods. Let's start with the test footages. I'm gonna show you my project settings. Uh, so we are in the timeline color space in Rec 709 scene and uh, output color space in Rec 709 Gamma 2.4. You can do it in DaVinci Y Gamut. I will show you how to implement it in DaVinci Y Gamut at the end of the video. But as a plugin needs to be implemented in a node-based color management, you can't use the DaVinci YRGB color manage with this plugin. So um, let's just stay in Rec 709 scene first. And after I'm gonna show you for DaVinci Y Gamut at the end of the video. To do this, uh, I just go to my library and uh, type color clone. So I'm having it here and I just drop it. Uh, this footage, if you see, is the FX3. So uh, what we're gonna do is that we're just gonna label it color clone, okay? And uh, I'm just gonna put the specification on my source camera. So my source camera is a Sony, exactly. And uh, my camera model is not A7S III, it's a FX3, okay? Um, I can leave the light spectrum to uh, 3200 Kelvin because uh, it's an interior shot. I'm just going to take a sip of my coffee because I just I put on the camera and started to talk to you guys. So I, I have a coffee to finish at the same time. For target camera, I see that I'm having um, all the cameras over here that are available to me. And I think I want to choose the Alexa 35 as a reference because I just feel that I want to have a very nice look, very commercial look. And if I can target the best camera out there in the market with my FX3, then uh, I win in this situation. So uh, target camera, I'm just going to put Ari. Camera model, it goes to Alexa 35. Perfect. And uh, output gamma, I just want to interpret it to Rec 709 first. Uh, so this is interpreted and it gives me a very nice color. I'm just going to keep it like this for the moment. And I'm just going to copy and paste on my Komodo the same, but here, instead of having camera make uh, Sony, I'm gonna have camera make red and the model is Komodo. And so I can check and I see that there is a bit of a difference just like because of the native color science of these two cameras. So the FX3 is a bit warmer, but uh, we're gonna have to readjust together because Color Clone has some tools for us to readjust our footages. Here I'm having my Alexa 35, so I just copy and paste and I change my camera to Alexa 35. And here, 
I'm having my pocket for K and I'm just gonna reinterpret it to uh, black magic and a pocket cinema camera 4K. So uh, we are very, very close. If you see, the only thing that I see in my grading monitor is that the FX3 is very warm. And let's say uh, the Komodo is a bit too magenta, I would say. And the pocket 4K is a tiny bit magenta too. I can come back to my FX3 over here and uh, I can fine tune within my color clone and uh, what i'm gonna do is just going uh, minus something like this and yeah that's all for me i think that's good komodo um if you see on my komodo we're just gonna remove a bit of magenta the slider for tint is inverted from tint uh, on the, my primary so i was you know, like when I was testing it, I was going towards minus to put some green and uh, it doesn't work. <laughs> it's the other way around. So uh, you need to um, uh, invert a bit your logic and just like uh, go to positive to add some green. And uh, for the pocket, I'm just going to go to the pocket over here and uh, we're just going to remove also some green. So we're just going to go towards positive and we're gonna add some warmth and so i think we are pretty close of course like if i really need to chart match it really really close uh what i can do is also like add a bit more contrast on the fx3 and uh and yes, um, that would that would do the trick also. So you can see in just few clicks, we are pretty close. And I love how the footage is behaving to the interpretation. So um, I'm just going to do the same, but with footages that are not shot at the same time, just to see if keep its promises, right? So uh, we're just going to uh, put our color clone. And over here, I'm having an Ari Alexa LF. And I'm just going to apply the same logic on my shots over like my bunch of footages. My Alexa 35 is offering the most color space uh, that I can have uh, in terms of log. So maybe what I'm going to do is that I'm going to target Alexa 35. So then I can transform my Sony's to Alexa 35 and see what it does. So our camera, uh, we just go to Ari and we change it to uh, Alexa Mini LF. And light spectrum, what well, then it's interesting because because all my shots now are outside. I can change my light spectrum to uh, 5600K uh, because then I will have a better interpretation of the footage. Target camera, uh, that's gonna be Ari and Alexa 35. Uh, we're just gonna interpret it first in Rec 709. Uh, let's see. And uh, I'm just gonna do the same on the other shot. So as it wasn't shot the same moment, uh, we have a bit of disparities in terms of lighting. So I'm just gonna readjust really quickly uh, what we have. Uh, so I can see that the uh, Ari Alexa LF is too dark so i'm just going to change my waveform to see where i am uh, up and uh, we're just going to put some gain for the sake of the example okay and i just keep like keep it like this a7s uh this a7s3 footage is a bit too bright so i'm just gonna go down with my gain to have something that is a bit more similar than the other shot. Okay, so over here, I have some disparities in terms of um, color interpretation, but if, for example, I can fix them with the fine tuning, then it's great. Uh, so let's see. Uh, I see that, for example, the Ari Alexa is interpreting everything too green. So I'm just going to go to the Ari Alexa and uh, I'm going I'm going to slide uh, towards a minus something. So this was before, this is after. It does a lot of job here. Uh, so I'm just going to be around minus uh, 137. So uh, this is our um, shot matching and uh, it's pretty cool. So what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to grab the steel of uh, what we've done together uh, with the color clone. 
So I, here I'm just going to call that color clone. And uh, we're going to compare it with uh, the color space transform. To have a fair fight, we're going to interpret our footages out of the original camera to the Alexa 35 log and we interpret it to Rec 709. I'm just going to remove this. I keep my balance and go to my color space transform. And I'm just going to go from Ari Y gamut log C3. Two Ari, while gamut four, log C four. Okay. Uh, create another node and paste it. Then it's gonna be. Uh, I'm just swapping from Ari Alexa Ari log C four to uh, Rec seven or nine and gamma two point four. Okay. So this is our interpretation over here. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to do the same uh, on the Alexa. That's our interpretation over here. Okay, so let's see. Let's just compare what we have over here. This one is the interpretation with the uh, CST. I just kept the balance that I've done with the other shot matching with color clone. This is our color clone. So this is our color space transform and this is our color clone. So the main difference that I can see is that uh, color space transform will bring you way more color out of your image as an interpretation. It could be good, could be bad. Um, it really depends on what you want as a base to start and uh, it really depends on what you're looking for as a style. I'm just toggling on and off to see the differences. And so what I can actually notice from my color space transform and my uh, color clone. So this is color clone, which is a bit uh, colder than color space transform. Uh, my color clone is actually a bit better in terms of interpreting the skin tone in the same areas. In the sense of like, um, I feel that my skin tones over here are way, are not so far compared to my footages here in Color Space Transform. So this is my first point. My second point is that, for example, here the interpretation of the colors in Color Clone are a bit more alike in the sense of like, I feel that my greens are following the same kind of logic in terms of colors than uh, what I have in my color space transform. Um, so in my color space transform, I feel that maybe it's because it's more saturated. Um, I have a bit more uh, colors in the green going on uh, that maybe don't really uh, follow as much what we have uh, in a color uh, clone in the sense of color clone is stay pretty contained, I would say, in the greens. Uh, but uh, what I have, sorry, what I have in color space transform is a bit more um, spilling and have a bit more uh, shades that maybe don't really match with, with what I want if I want a pure match. What is also pretty interesting is that you can switch to um, implementing a film emulation uh, to your footage. So let's see with the film emulation if uh, everything stay together. I'm going to change the output gamma to uh, Ari Log C4, okay, for Ari Alexa. And uh, I'm just going to uh, put a color space transform. Input color space, this is going to be our Ari Y gamut, Ari log C4, and uh, we're going to interpret it to a Cineon log up like this, and uh, I don't want any tone mapping. And then uh, I can interpret it with a lot. So a uh, film look, I go to film look and I put uh, any lot that I want. Um, I think I'm just going to put a D65 because uh, it's the most neutral uh, of lots that you can have. Um, so let's just like interpret it with D65. I'm just going to do the same uh, with the rest of it. I really feel that in just few clicks, I'm having the same kind of behavior on uh, 
a reference camera, which then is great because it can really speed up your process. And this is why like, I really wanted to show it to you guys because if you have some struggle with, you know, with shot matching footages, uh, I think this is a very handy tool that can really help you in your color grading and um, that can be safer if also you are um, a colorist that just started. It's safer because it is very intuitive and it is very guided. So I think, I think this is great. This is great if you're also starting color grading. For those that are a bit more advanced, I'm going to show you how to implement it in your DaVinci Wide Gamut pipeline. So for this, it's just very easy. Let's just come back to our uh, color correction over here and we stay to uh, lock C4. And over here, I'm just going to take a color space transform. Of course, uh, we need to change the project settings to uh, DaVinci Y Gamut as a uh, timeline color space. And so for this one, uh, we're just going to take uh, Ari Y Gamut 4, Ari Log C4. Okay. Uh, we go to DaVinci Y Gamut. And you need to reinterpret it after. So I'm just going to copy and paste. You can swap it, so DaVinci first, and you can go to Rec 709, Gamma 2.4. And then it's reinterpreted. And so you have uh, the source camera that is being changed from Alexa Mini LF to Alexa 35, and uh, it has been implemented to a DaVinci White Gamut uh, color space, where then like you do all your changes in the middle. So for example, the balance that I've done, uh, instead of doing it before, you're doing it uh, in the middle of your sandwich. So let's say I want to have a bit more gain, then I do it here because I want to have the characteristic of the DaVinci Y gamut. That is all for me, guys. Um, I think it's a very cool tool and I think it's a very cool plugin. Uh, especially if you are a beginner because uh, as I said earlier it's very guided and it avoids you to miss some things when for example your eye is not as trained so I think it's great uh, to have this because at least it uh, gives you a safety net what I would love them to do is actually rec 709 footages because um, this tool would be amazing if for example you can take crappy Rec. 709 footage and uh, make them interpreted uh, to uh, a color space that is bigger color space that is different than a color space transform because color space transform is cool but sometimes have some limitation uh, to reinterpret like for example Rec. 709 footage hoping that maybe they, they will do this that would be my, my only note uh, but apparently they are coming uh, with uh, more cameras soon I hope you like discovering this tool with me and maybe it will inspire you to put it in your workflow which is cool I put the link of Color Clone in the description and um, I see you next time guys see you